Welcome back to Barbecue and Bottles. And today we're gonna to be testing out this non-stick cast iron pan. So it's supposed to cook like cast iron and got the thermal properties of cast iron, but it cleans up just like a non-stick pan. So today we're gonna to be putting it through an experiment, searing off two New York strips side by side with this lodge, just to show you the difference in the cook and the cleanup. So if you're into that kind of thing, stick around. So the real benefit of cooking with cast iron is its weight. And that weight allows it to absorb a ton of heat. So when you put a steak down or some other protein that's cold, the actual cast iron pan doesn't lose that much heat. So the thermal capacity and the thermal properties are great for cooking. So we weighed these two and our lodge came out at about 130 ounces. And this guy came out at about 105 ounces. So that might sound like a big difference. It's about 20 to 25% lighter. But when you compare that to a stainless steel or our non-stick pans, both of those were coming out around 50 ounces. So we're still about twice the weight of a regular non-stick or an aluminum pan. So this guy is made of all the same materials that a regular cast iron pan is made out of. It just has a non-stick coating on the surface. So I've got these two USDA Prime New York strips from the butcher here. And these look absolutely incredible. We're gonna get these seasoned up. So to start with, we'll just pat them dry with paper towel. Now we're just gonna go in with a little salt. Now we're not doing our 24 hour dry brine here and that's fine. We'll see how these turn out with the salting just before we put them on the pan. Now remember, save your pepper for the end because you don't want this to burn while you're searing these steaks off in the pans. So now we're just gonna get some garlic cloves here. Just tap those down. Perfect. Now I've got our crushed garlic ready. Take off some of this skin here. Now that we've got these steaks prepped, let's fire up the grill. So we've had these warming up over medium to high heat and we have the lid closed just so cast iron here will warm up evenly. You can see we're at 450, 460 on this pan. And then on our cast iron, we're about 450 here. So we've got the same temps on the pan. So they've heated up the same, which is great. Now we confirm with the manufacturer of this pan that it can handle heats of up to 550 before you start to damage the nonstick coating. So we're well within those limits. So as a first step, we're just gonna get these fat caps down and sear these off in the pans. So we're doing both of these at the same time. And this fat, we're just trying to render down the fat cap as opposed to using avocado oil, which is our normal process. But we're just gonna get some natural oils out of the fat cap of the beef to use through our cook here. So now we're just gonna check in on the crust and see how they look. Beautiful fat caps. Now the other one, got a good sear in both of these. So we'll get them down into the pans and just press down, making sure we're getting good surface contact across the whole steak. Beautiful. Now we'll let these go for probably two to three minutes on this side before we flip them. So we're just gonna flip these steaks over. Frankly, not much of a crust on either of these, and that's just because we salted these steaks immediately before we put them on the grill as opposed to doing the 24 hour dry brine. But that's all right, we'll build up this crust over the course of the rest of this cook. So at this point, we're gonna go in with a little bit of homemade clarified butter that we made. And we clarified this ourselves just because it increases the smoke point to a little over 500 Fahrenheit. So it's perfect if you're trying to sear off steaks like this and you don't have to worry about burning the butter. Now we'll add in our garlic cloves and we're gonna add in a healthy dose of thyme here. We've normally done rosemary, but we wanna switch it up. Either one is perfect. The flavor profile pairs great with steak. So once you've got your clarified butter melted, you just wanna push your steak to the side of the pan. Get all this garlicky thyme goodness over here. Put that up onto your steak and then you're just gonna baste. And this is gonna help bring some brownness to the crust where that didn't really form just off of the surface of that initial sear. So now we'll do the same with the non-stick pan. And of course we can't use a metal spoon with that. So we're just using a wooden spoon, which is gonna make 
the basting a little bit more difficult. So we're looking for an internal temp of 128 here. We're at 17, 106 on this guy. And over here, we're at 105. So it's about the same temp. We're just gonna close the lid down here and let these go for another few minutes. So what we're gonna do here is just move the thyme and garlic off of the steak, give it another flip. And we'll do the same with the other pan here as well. Just to make sure we're getting even done this on both sides. They both had about two minutes on that side. So I'll flip it one more time, just to ensure we're getting as close to an edge to edge medium rare as you can. So we're just gonna come in for a temp check here. We're at 125, we're at 128 on this guy. So time to bring these steaks off the grill. All right, now we're just gonna drizzle some of that compound butter. It's been infused with the thyme and the garlic right over top of the steak. And now we're gonna take these inside and let them rest for 10 minutes. So just for the cleanup step here, one of the tips we have is just putting a little tin foil into the drain of your sink and then just pouring this straight into your tin foil. Now you don't want all that butter going down your sink drain, it's gonna clog it up. So this is just an easy way to let that solidify and then you can toss it in the garbage. So here are the two pans right off of the grill. Both of them have been drained of most of their grease. So what we usually do while they're still hot is just crumple up a little bit of excess paper towel here and then just wipe down our pans. Just get that excess grease out of the way. So the non-stick one cleaned up pretty easily and we'll do the same with the cast iron. Now you can definitely tell with the cast iron, there's a little bit more stuff that's actually stuck on here. And with this, you can see it's a little bit cleaner, but we'll see once these cool down and we get them into the sink, whether it's a big deal to get this off or whether the non-stick actually saves us some time. So first off, we're gonna start with our regular cast iron. And for this, we're just gonna put in a little bit of hot water. And then we've got our fiber scouring pad here. We're just gonna go around the pan, try to get all those loose bits off. So a quick scrub like that, and we've got this perfectly clean. So we'll dry this off now, and then we've gotta re-season it just with some avocado oil or some other neutral oil like canola. And otherwise, that cleanup was pretty quick. Now we're gonna come in and clean the non-stick. And with this, we're just gonna use a little J cloth. So we're just gonna go around, scrub this. And we're not using the scrubby because this is a non-stick pan. It's perfect, just like that. A little elbow grease, and this cleaned up perfectly. Now, the beauty of this pan is you don't have to re-season it with an oil. So we can just dry this off and we're done cleaning it up. The other benefit here, if for whatever reason we weren't actually able to get all this stuff off, you can use dish soap with this versus you're not supposed to use soap with regular cast iron because you can just ruin the layer of seasoning. So one last step in the process and this was an absolute breeze to clean up. So we've had these resting for about 10 minutes here. Now, this is the steak that was done in cast iron. This is the one that was done in the non-stick cast iron. And you can see there's a little bit more of a crust on the steak that was done in the cast iron versus the non-stick. So now let's cut into these and see if there's a difference of doneness on the inside. So as we can see here, we got a really nice even medium rare all the way through both of these steaks, frankly. So now we're just gonna hit that with a little bit of flaky salt. So this is smoked Maldon salt, adds a nice flavor profile to our steak here. This also adds a little different texture or crunch as you're biting into your steak. Now this is certainly a preference. Sometimes I like to go in with the crunchy salt, sometimes not, and then Hit them with a little bit of pepper, freshly ground, of course, at the end. So now there's just one thing left to do here, and that's give it a taste test and see if there's any difference in the taste profile of each steak. Got a good little piece there. Actually, I'm gonna get the one with the fat cap. You all know I love the fat cap. Mmm, absolutely delicious. Now I'm gonna try the other one. 
Of course, a piece with the fat cap as well. Go in for the taste. So good, really tender. You can tell these are USDA prime steaks. We got the flavor of the butter because we basted these a ton in that clarified butter. You can taste the thyme and the garlic. Both of these have a really robust herbal profile to them that I really, really like. And of course, the flaky salt and pepper turned out great. Overall though, on the cook, I'm gonna give the cast iron a marginal lead just because I think it did have a bit better of a crust than the nonstick pan, but that's certainly something that's on the margin here. So in the end, what's my view? Is the two and a half times price tag worth it? Well, you don't have to use as much oil in order to achieve the nonstick on this pan versus a traditional cast iron, so that's a plus. You'll save a little bit of time in terms of not having to re-season after a shorter cleanup period, but otherwise, we didn't find a huge difference between the actual cooking outcome. And that's frankly one of the things that we were hoping for. We were hoping that extra thermal capacity given the weight of this pan made it cook just like cast iron. So that's it folks. If you like this video, consider giving us a like or leaving a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more recipes and experiments to come. Thanks for tuning in.